Hey guys, welcome back to our last lesson in our study on the fruit of the Spirit. Now up to now we've looked at love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and now we're looking at self-control. So, so let's look at the verse that I want to use for today. It, it comes from 1 Timothy 4.12 and it says this, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. You see, self-control refers to the, the exercise of restraint over one's actions, over their emotions, or, or even desires. And just as young children are taught how to ask for something politely and not grab, it's something that is learned through practice and determination. This is because as Christians, it, it usually refers to stopping ourselves from following our selfish and sinful desires. It is often easier said than done because it involves controlling not only our outward actions, but more importantly, our inner thoughts and emotions. And this is because as the Proverbs 423 says above all else guard your heart for everything you do flows from it I, I want to take a look today at a story found in Daniel 1 1 through 21 you see Daniel and his three friends were uh, were among the young men taken captive by Babylon when they defeated and destroyed Jerusalem and they were put into this training so that they may be more usable by the king. And they were assigned a daily amount of good food and, and wine from the king's table. Now Daniel was far from his homeland and his family, but he did not forget his faith and, and the teachings he learned as a child. Verse 8 says, But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and, and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself in this way. Now, Daniel showed self-control in three areas of his life in this story. Because the story goes on past what I, what I talked about. And the first of that is he, he controls himself in his thinking he also controls himself in his speech and he also controls himself in the conduct or his actions so so the first of those in our thinking controlling our minds is is um or or controlling our thinking whatever we do or say is a result of what we believe or what we have decided in our hearts you know, sometimes we put on fronts. We'll say something, we'll, we'll agree to something, but it's not really what we truly agree with internally. So this is the first area that we must conquer. It is important that we, we fill our minds with good things and rebuke thoughts and desires that are evil and not pleasing to the Lord. We, we have to figure out what is truly important in our lives so that we know what our priorities are and we will be guided as to what we should and shouldn't do or, or what to do first and what we can afford to let go of. The second thing was, was controlling our speech. Now Daniel decided in his heart what to do and so he asked permission to do it. And, and I want you to see that he showed respect and wisdom and how he asked for permission. The chief official was, was hesitant about Daniel's request because he was afraid it might get him into trouble. But Daniel negotiated with him and to, to test them. Or he, he negotiated and, and to test them for 10 days before making the final decision. You see, Daniel wanted to eat the foods that he wanted to eat to prove that that would make him a, a stronger than if he ate and drunk the, the wine 
that the king offered. That is, a, a, the way he went about that was a manner of controlled speech. Daniel was able to convince the chief official to let him eat only vegetables and water and not the king's food. And the third thing was controlling our actions. What they thought and said they would do, that is exactly what they did. Daniel and his friends did not allow themselves to be defiled or polluted, even if they were surrounded by pagans and unbelievers. And this is the, the Christian challenge, to be in the world but not of the world. It means to be a good example of Christian living, even if somebody else around us is practicing worldly living. We are, we are called to be different and to live holy lives, those lives that we live for Jesus. So, so what does this look like for us? Well, well, as Christians, we are to be good examples and show the world how God wants us to really live. And like Daniel and his friends, young people can and should do this as well. Being young is, is not an excuse to live wild lives and try to test everything that, that the world has to offer. And, and that we should wait till adulthood before changing for the better. God has chosen us, young men and young women, to show the world what it means to be a follower of Jesus in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Well, well I hope you've enjoyed this study on the fruit of the Spirit. I hope it has helped you in your everyday walk with God, and hopefully you've been able to share some of it with your friends and the, and the family that you're around. But just because we're done with this study doesn't mean we're going away. You still get to come back and see me. But next time we'll, we'll begin another study. I'm not going to tell you what it is because I don't even know what it is that myself. But you'll have to wait to then to see what it is. So until then, remember, God made you, God loves you, and God wants to be your friend. See you guys next time.